because of the the the, the void left after Anne Boleyn has gone and Seymour's coming in. Uh, we find him in a different place in the sense that there's potential for happiness now. It looks like things are going to be a bit less crazy and more agreeable to him. He's going to have to put his neck on the line a lot less. Uh, unfortunately, this obviously isn't the way it goes uh, for poor Charles. He has to choose a lot this season between his own personal feelings about religion and choices which he makes due to this religion and duty to his friend and the king. And uh, we find this with the Pilgrimage of Grace in particular, where Charles is a Catholic, secretly, um, and, and people sort of know he's a Catholic, but he's not open about it, and he's, he's still a supporter of the Reformation. But he's sent north to put this Pilgrimage of Grace down, and he's forced to do things which he finds incredibly distasteful. There's a horrible moment of, of where... She asks, if it was your own child, would you do it? And he says, I, I'd have to. And th that, I guess, is, is a huge turning point for husband and wife and father and son, and especially the relationship with his son. It sort of seems to recover, and then it gets worse as Brandon starts to lose his mind a bit over what he's done, and then the guilt stays with him. He agrees with everything that they want. But yet, you'll see this conflict with everything he does. He has to represent the crown and the royal forces with strength, and yet he, he truly, truly agrees with what they're doing and disagrees with what Cromwell is doing and how he's going about it. Um, his religious beliefs, of course, come into it an awful lot. But... What, is, what comes into, into it the most is the way that the Reformation is being handled, which he disagrees with. And, uh, yeah, the difficulties he's facing when he sees these honest men, um, some of them are more difficult than others, but honest men who want things which he wants, and yet he is now being told by his king and his friend that he has to do certain things. <laughs> I don't think everyone's well aware of, of how big the rebellion is. I don't think they quite realised that there was 30,000 or 40,000, whatever it was, right there at that time. I think they were hoping a show of strength would make them turn away. And, of course, they don't. Um, wouldn't be a very interesting story if they did, really. But, but they don't. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think Henry realises the extent of trying to force Charles to go to war with these guys, or actually sort of give battle. If he does realise, then I think it's partially his, his impatience and his uh, petulance as a king to try and force Charles's hand. But thankfully, Charles does get to do things the way he wants to do it and sues for peace successfully. And, uh, yeah, he gets to alleviate his conscience for at least a brief while. combination of things uh, such as I mean the rebellion for one is an enormous deal uh, because how dare they turn against their king this is his own kingdom, his own people uh, rising in revolt, the entire north of England is in these rebels hands and then of course there's his son uh, who, who isn't a full healthy boy either, he, he's I mean he's a full child obviously but he's not, he's not fully healthy um and then Jane's death. The ulcer as well. He's, he's realizing his youth is gone. His lack of control over his court. Um, even his best friend is questioning him. And so I think all these factors contribute to an already unstable mind finally falling into a state of insanity.